Let's be honest, if you achieved something so great, something you've been working toward your entire life, you'd probably go on some sort of bender celebrating like there's no tomorrow. Well, some NHLers have been known for taking their Stanley Cup celebrations a little too far. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at 10 of the craziest Stanley Cup celebrations to ever happen. The Toronto Maple Leafs Bonfire Well, it's been such a long time since the Leafs got close to the Cup, so we might as well start off with them just so you Leaf fans can feel what it's like to see your team celebrate. In 1962, the Toronto Maple Leafs had won the Stanley Cup, and how did they celebrate? A team bonfire. Well, that just sounds like some nice team bonding time, nothing wrong with that. That is until the team decided to drop the cup right into the bonfire, significantly damaging the cup and having to pay for its repairs out of their own pocket. You see, you treat the Stanley Cup like it's a s'more and you curse your team forever. Well, that's not true. The Leafs actually won the cup three more times in that decade, so maybe they should light some more stuff on fire to get their groove back. Marc Messier hitting up the strip clubs. That's right, you heard me. Marc Messier, accompanied by his team, took the Stanley Cup for a celebratory visit to the strip club. This didn't just happen once for Messier, but he liked it so much the first time he did it with the Oilers in 87 that he did it again with the Rangers in 94. After winning the cup, Messier and the Oilers walked across the street to the Forum Inn, placed the cup on the stage, and let the dancers use it as a prop all night. I don't know about you, but that sort of makes me want to never touch the cup if I ever get the chance. And then again in 1994, Messier and the Rangers brought the cup to a gentleman's club called Scores. The club was actually owned by Michael Blutrick, a mob informant who helped the feds put away infamous mobsters like John Gotti Jr. In a 60 Minutes segment, Blue Trick told Anderson Cooper about Messier and the Rangers' visit to his club. He said, The New York Rangers came to scores on the night they won the Stanley Cup, filled the Stanley Cup with champagne and shared it with everybody and then left the cup. They got drunk, they left the cup. Could you imagine getting so drunk you left the Stanley Cup at a strip club? Phil Kessel's Hot Dog Celebration This one is less crazy and just a little more gross. Kessel is known around the league for his unhealthy eating habits, but he's so well known for this because of his ability to still be a top six forward in the league while eating like a beer leaguer. When Phil won his second Stanley Cup with the Penguins, he decided to bring the cup to a golf course and filled it up with hot dogs. My, how the league has changed. In the 80s and 90s, strippers were dancing all over the cup, and in 2017, Phil Kessel was stuffing the cup with hot dog meat. I hope Kessel finds himself with another cup so he can bless us with another gross hot dog in the cup moment. Using the Stanley Cup as a toilet. In 2008, the Detroit Red Wings had won the Stanley Cup and during their locker room celebrations, Chris Draper thought it would be cute to put his newborn daughter in the cup for a nice photo op. Well, I can't blame him there. That's a memory that will last a lifetime. Well, it certainly will last a lifetime, but not for its cuteness. Unfortunately for Baby Draper, nature called and she crapped into the Stanley Cup. Yes, she's a baby and obviously this is an accident, but you gotta feel bad for everyone who drank out of that cup afterwards. The Boston Bruins Bar Tab when celebrating a Stanley Cup win, things are kind of expected to get out of hand, but for the 2011 Boston Bruins, they took their celebrations to a whole new level. The weekend they won, the team hit up a nightclub with a cup and partied there for four straight hours. That may not sound like much, but four straight hours of the entire Boston Bruins team drinking could absolutely get out of hand, especially when it came to their bill. It's been said that the damage they made at the bar totaled $156,679.74, which included a tip of $24,869.80 for their server. Here's a breakdown of their actual bar tab. Well, at least they were responsible and mixed in some Fiji waters. Claude Lemieux and Howard Stern's prank. Claude Lemieux made a reputation for himself as a bit of a prankster and in 1995 when the Devils won the cup, he definitely lived up to his reputation. Joining Howard Stern and his team live on air, Claude Lemieux brought the Stanley Cup onto the show and while on air, Stern and his co-host proceeded in pretending to defecate in the cup, much like Draper's newborn daughter. This was right on brand for Stern listeners, however fans of the NHL and the Devils did not take this prank well and it got pretty heated about the whole thing. Here's how it all played out. We gotta do something to this cup. 
What do I? What should I do with it? Should I hold it or something? I think whatever you want to do with me is fine. Don't you think it'd be funny if Jackie went in the bathroom on it? Oh, stop. Don't you think that's funny? I think you'd have to go with Jackie. Yeah. yeah. Don't you think that'd be you, funny? You, you'd hold the cup, Jackie, right? go ahead. Go go to the bathroom in the cup. <laughs> right in front of Claude. <laughs> Little one? Yeah, pull your pants and go to the bathroom. <laughs> That'll be legend, right, Claude? Uh, That'd be legend. Yeah. But is that okay to do? Ah, uh, sure. <laughs> Did you really go to the bathroom? One of the most disgusting things Did you go? Oh, oh, let me oh, see. That's oh, terrible. Didn't. Let me see. What did he here. do? Give me the it. cup. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Get Don't that toilet it paper off it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he went. No, he oh, did not. That's terrible. Look. Oh, oh, that's oh, bad. Oh, that's chocolate. Oh, oh, chocolate. Using the Stanley Cup for baptisms. Now, I never knew this was a thing, but apparently it happened on several occasions. In 1996, Colorado Avalanche's Sylvain Leflebe became the first player to use the Stanley Cup as a baptismal font for his daughter. Then, in 2008, Thomas Holmstrom of the Detroit Red Wings took the cup all the way to Sweden for his cousin's daughter's baptism. And it doesn't stop there. In 2017, Pittsburgh Penguin Josh Archibald followed suit and also baptized his son in the cup as well. And lastly, after the Avalanche won the cup in 2022, Jack Johnson one-upped everyone who baptized their kids in the cup before him as he took all three of his children to get baptized in the Stanley Cup. The Rideau Canal. In 1905, the Ottawa Silver 7 won the Stanley Cup and the way they celebrated was unlike any other team. I mean, these group of guys sound like absolute degenerates. After hitting up a bar and gathering up that liquid courage, forward Harry Smith was dared to dropkick the Stanley Cup into the Rideau Canal. If you're unfamiliar with the Rideau Canal, it connects the Ottawa River with Lake Ontario and typically in the winter when it freezes over, people come out to skate on it. But it wasn't the winter and Harry Smith just straight up dropkicked the Stanley Cup into a river. Putting the cherry on top, they drunkenly just left it there and Smith had to return the next day to find the cup washed up on the side of the canal. Ray Bork's return to Boston. This one may make you tear up a bit. After spending several years playing in a Bruins jersey, at the end of his career, Bork was on the hunt for a cup and eventually found himself playing in Colorado, contending for one. In his first year with the Avalanche, the team fell short during the conference finals, but the following year, Bork and the team pulled it off and became the 2000-2001 Stanley Cup champions. Instead of celebrating with the cup at home or a local bar with some friends and family, Bork, being the class act that he is, decided to bring the cup to Boston and celebrate with his old fan base. It was a beautiful moment in sports history as 20,000 Bruins fans showed up to celebrate with Bork. That's how much Boston meant to him and that's how much he meant to the Boston franchise. After winning this cup and celebrating with the fan base that loved them for years and years, Bork finally retired. The Stanley Cup goes to war. In 2007, cup keeper Mike Bolt took a trip to Afghanistan with the Stanley Cup to spend some time with the troops. Once he landed, the troops were excited to see the cup and everyone was taking photos with it. After a while, cup keeper Mike Bolt took a break and headed to the showers to get washed up. As he was changing, the alarms went off. Now Bolt was under the impression that this was just the drill, so he remained in his room sitting on the cup case until everything settled down. Well, it turns out that this was not a drill and the base was actually under attack. The Cup and him were lucky enough not to be harmed in this situation. Here's what he had to say about it. Later on, I get back to the barracks and hear an air raid siren, but I was dying for a shower, so I figured I'd just sit tight. I got into my room, true story, sat down on the Cup case and read Maxim. I swear, I go into the shower and when I get out, a bunch of guys are around going, Mike, where were you during the missile attack? I told them, sitting on the Cup case reading Maxim, and they said, Holy crap, you're dedicated to your job. Truth be told, if I had known better, I would have ditched the cup and been like George Costanza, pushing women and children out of the way. Thanks for watching our videos. Don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you in the next video.